Hello, I want to talk a bit about radionics here and I did a lot of research um, in respect to radionic devices and the idea generally about the radionic devices is that you have a sort of amplifier in the instrument that enhances um, thought energy or other forms of information like uh, um, values of capacitors or resistors that you use in a number system um, like it is in the classical Hieronymus device but basically the idea is that there is an amplifier inside that will uh, somewhat enhance information from its input and give um, the amplified information to its output which goes to a sort of um, antenna or emitting plate um, where we will wrap our fingers on to receive a sort of a stick reaction and uh, by that stick reaction we can tune the instrument to its best performance That's a kind of abstract description and I looked uh, especially what that amplifier could be and um, many people use just symbols or um, symbolic uh, chambers or uh, chambers uh, little boxes with, uh, filled with light or uh, crystals um, on, and other non-electronic means for amplification and I uh, was looking into the electronic means of amplification like a classical audio amplifier or something and um, in some of the books I read uh, there was uh, recommended that we use an audio amplifier which operates on a frequency range from uh, 20 to 20,000 hertz uh, which is the hearable range that we can hear and this amplifier would only amplify frequencies that are in that frequency range from 20 to 20,000 hertz and uh, I found that idea a bit weird because what has uh, radionics to do with the music we can hear or with the sound we can um, experience and then it's over, you know, it's like uh, when it goes beyond the sound level that we can hear, uh, it's cut off somewhat with an audio amplifier and that motivated me to look a bit further into the matter and there are of course other amplifiers that amplify a whole range of frequencies that go up to 100 megahertz and more and this we see in the technology that we surround ourselves nowadays like uh, all the electric devices we have uh, cell phones or um, router, routers and um, stuff we go uh, in the internet with they all run on very high frequencies they go in the microwave uh, section of frequencies and I looked uh, in the frequency range from uh, let's say 4 megahertz to 100 megahertz and I built various electronic devices that could generate such frequencies they are called in generally uh, oscillators and I made a lot of uh, various types of oscillators like Colpitz oscillator or Butler oscillator um, they are quite simple uh, to make and I also made oscillators that, that use quartz crystals um, and I looked at the output of them uh, on, my, uh, elect uh, on my oscilloscope and I could see the waveform and 
I was trying to connect with my mind to these waveforms, which sounds a bit funny, but uh, I recognized that um, uh, waveforms in the frequency range from 4 to um, 20 megahertz that they affect my consciousness differently than uh, frequencies that are from 30 to 40 uh, megahertz and I experience more resonance somewhat uh, when I try to connect to go, go in resonance with these frequencies and the fact is that our brain uh, is not capable of doing this, our brain is not capable of generating frequencies in that frequency range and but uh, during my exploration into the matter I also learned about harmonics and you can of course generate a frequency with your brain and by um, ha harmonics you can pick up the harmonics of that so actually uh, you can use that technique to tune into higher frequencies like these I mentioned from uh, 30 megahertz to 40 megahertz and um, there were also side effects when I um, made experience with these oscillators let's say I played, uh, played a long time with uh, 34 Point three uh, megahertz, and this is has a calming or quietening effect on my mind. And I assume that the mind is not uh, the same as the brain. Uh, the brain is the physical part, um, or the receiving station of the mind, I would say. So the mind is more an abstract thing uh, that we cannot locate. That uh, is my conviction. And so when I talk about the mind, I mean uh, some effects I can observe in my brain from something that goes in resonance to my mind. And I uh, assume that these frequencies of 34.3, for example, megahertz, that they go in resonance with my mind. And I feel an effect uh, also in my brain, like deep... Um, alpha states or gamma states uh, I don't have uh, the instrumentation really to measure that uh, but I often feel like in a sort of Buddhist state or in a, in a very uh, in an alertness that is uh, somewhat um, like a small, slow motion in my brain and it is very relaxing on, and it feels very harmonizing as well. Mm. So, after having said this, um, what is in the books about these electronic amplifiers? And I have a book from Harry G. Stein, and uh, he wrote kind of weird book about the uh, Hieronymus device and some experiments he made with that device. And, um, Inside the book there are uh, two schematics for an amplifier that is set to run on the audio frequencies, very low frequencies, we could say. At least in comparison to what I'm aiming at. And I, of course I made these amplifiers, I soldered them uh, together and I recognized that when you um, when you give them a feedback loop, um, that's a bit technical now, but uh, that means that you connect um, the output to the input and make a loop and you fit in in that collection an inductor or a capacitor, then uh, these uh, frequencies from the outputs that go normally from 500 kilohertz to 1500 kilohertz suddenly they jump to 8 megahertz up to 40 megahertz and then I said aha that's the frequency I'm aiming at so I want to play with this for a while and I integrated such a circuit in a radionic device I've built long before 
and to see if there's any effect uh, it has. And this is the reason why I make this video. I just want to introduce that technology a bit so that you can understand uh, what harmonics are and how you can build um, a circuit for yourself uh, that is public domain. And I think there are also no copyright restrictions on it because the book is very old. And uh, when you can make the circuit for yourself, you can also build a, a small device around it and see what happens in your own experiments. So here's the book uh, from G. Harry Stein and inside the book there are some circuits shown and uh, this one I made for myself. And it is very simple to make in comparison to other circuits. You can even uh, take that layout for the components. Uh, we don't have a lot of uh, messing up with the wires because the layout is very clear. I also made this one uh, that works with an uh, operational amplifier and it's a bit more difficult to make but basically they do the same. And what they do, what I found out, um, I, I measured the output with my oscilloscope um, because originally in that uh, circuit 3, then the input and the output is not connected together, so there is no loop. And these circuits, they um, vibrate in uh, the range of um, 500 kilohertz to 1650 kilohertz. And to my surprise, they generate a square wave. And Normally, when you broadcast something, uh, you do it uh, with sine waves. Um, they have rounded, there's a rounded form like that. And the circuit here that I have shown uh, generates uh, square waves that is somewhat on and off, on and off. And this is important for considerations that have to do with the idea of broadcasting. Because uh, you cannot broadcast anything with a, with a square wave because it generates so, so much harmonics that you don't get a clear signal out and that you can receive with a, with a receiver. Although in the frequency range it would be possible to transmit, um, it's uh, called the AM radio range, uh, which is also uh, used uh, to broadcast radio programs and music and so on. And the idea of broadcasting is very fascinating because you use your radionic device to broadcast the information to the target mm, you have located. And how to locate the target? You can do it by uh, band scanning. For example, uh, you define a, a weight for the, the target you want to reach. Or you use a sample. That is, um, you use a photograph or uh, some sort of specimen with DNA information and by that you are able to project the energies towards the target and the idea with the electronic devices is that the device amplifies the signal and broadcasts it to the target. That's the whole thing. And I wondered about that and how I could use electronic circuitry for that. So we look a bit further into the circuit itself. This is the circuit I have built and basically it's a three-stage amplifier as um, T. Gale and Hieronymus described it in this patent. And uh, you see here the three transistors, one smaller, two larger. Harry Stein uh, somewhat built uh, this circuit and he made the design of it. Um, to make a replication of what um, the early uh, tube-based amplifiers were because um, at the time Hieronymus uh, invented the device there were only tube amplifiers available so Harry Stein somewhat uh, rebuilt the circuit with more modern parts that are still available, available today and 
now uh, it is connected to the power supply and it draws uh, around 50 milliamps by 12 volt and uh, I have also connected the probe of my oscilloscope so that I can show uh, a picture of the square wave it generates when nothing is connected to the input of the circuit it generates a frequency of 12,300 kilohertz approximately now I added a so-called witness well to the circuit and when I connect it between the input and ground and when I insert my finger in the inductor the frequency will slow down when I connect the input with one end of the coil and the output with the other end of the coil the waveform will change into a sine wave up to 30 megahertz